Good morning. Today is Sunday, August 1st, 2021. In our Parsha this week, the Parsha of Re'e, God commands the Jewish people. Therefore, God says, I am commanding you, saying, Pasoach tiftach es yadcha, you shall surely open your hand, la'achicha, to your fellow, la'aniecha ulevyonecha ba'artzecha, ulevyoncha ba'artzecha. You should open your hand to the needy and to the poor in your land. This is the mitzvah to give tzedakah, to be generous, to share what we have with those who are in need. There is a very strange word in this verse that needs to be understood. Therefore, God says, I am commanding you. I'm commanding you to give tzedakah. Okay. But the words again are, I am commanding you, God says to the Jewish people, saying. Now, Lamor saying to say that doesn't seem to have any purpose in this pasik. That word Lamor is ubiquitous in the Torah. By Yadabra Hashem el Moshe Lamor. God said to Moshe, saying, and we've studied before that word Lamor always means when God speaks to Moshe, God means to tell Moshe, I want you to say this to the Jewish people. It means to repeat what I am saying to you, to the Jewish people. Because otherwise, if I say something just to you, Moshe, that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to share with everybody. When I say Lamor, to say it, that means I'm telling you to share it with the Jewish people. But here, God is addressing the Jewish people directly. I'm commanding you, God says. So what does it mean, I'm commanding you, saying? That word saying has no place in this Pasuk. Rabbi Dr. Abraham Tversky gives the following interpretation, and it's a lesson that is so important that all of us can learn. When a person comes to us to ask for tzedakah, or even if they don't come to ask, but we know about a person who is in need, of course, the person who is in need is very often embarrassed and humiliated and downtrodden that they need to receive help, that they need to ask for help. And so when we give tzedakah, we need to address not only the material need that the person has for food, for money, for whatever the, the material need that the person has, we also need to address the distress that the person is going through, the humiliation that the person is going through, the discomfort that the person has to have to ask for help. So how do we do that? Well, there are a number of ways to do that. Of course, the way that we speak to a person the way that we are warm to a person, never to be brusque, never to feel that they are intruding on us, that we're giving with a stingy hand. Of course, that is true. But there is a specific technique, a specific approach that is often helpful to a person who is undergoing poverty or financial need. And it goes like this. One of the things that we can say to a person is, listen, my friend, I want you to know you're asking me for help and I'm going to give you help. But I want you to know that wealth is cyclical. One day a person has and the next day a person does not have. A person go, can go through a period of plenty and then they go through a period of need. But the same is true in reverse. A person can go through a period of poverty, God forbid, a period of need where they have to ask others for help. But wealth is cyclical. And one day you will be able to offer others help. 
right now you need to receive help, but in the future, because it's cyclical, you will have enough and you'll have enough so that you're able to help someone else. In other words, the verse needs to be understood with a double meaning. God is commanding the person who has the wherewithal, the action to share what they have with others. But God is also saying, when you're sharing money with someone else who is in need, lay more, you should, you should also say the following words. You should say to the person who is in need, there will be a time when you will be able to open your hand to the one who is needy. It's a double meaning. The person who is in need, we are to say to that person, right now you need to ask for help. But there will come a time when you will no longer be in need and you will be able to give help to someone else. And that can be a remarkable, sensitive, uplifting help to a person for the distress that they're going through. And the truth is, this applies in every area of life. Dr. Tversky gives the example from his own professional career, as you know, for decades, he was involved with helping those who were suffering from addiction and drug use. And one of the things that he would find very helpful, a person who comes to him whose life has been ruined by alcohol and drugs and addiction, and they feel so terrible, and one of the things that is often helpful in that circumstance is to introduce that person to someone who has been through the same thing, who was also addicted, whose life was also ruined. And to say to them, listen, here's a person who is in your situation. And look, they've gotten out of that situation. And they are now in a position that they can help you. And Dr. Torsky would say to the person who is suffering, he would say, Listen, what you're going through is terrible. What you're going through is painful and it's humiliating and it makes you ashamed. But one day you'll overcome it and you will get better. So much so that you will be able to help the next person who is suffering from what you now are suffering. And it applies in every area of life. It's been my experience to be able in so many areas when a person is suffering and they're humiliated and they're embarrassed and their life is in ruin, to be able to say to that person, listen, what you're going through is terrible, but there will come a time when you get out of it, when you take the steps to help yourself or get the help that you need to help yourself, that you're gonna be helpful to somebody else. And I often say to people, I say, listen, I want you to know I'm putting you down on a list of the people that I'm going to call. The next person in the future that has a problem similar to this, I'm going to ask you to help them because you've been through it and you have overcome it. And you will have the ability to help that person more than anyone else. Even professionals who have not gone through it themselves. Nothing is so devastating to a person as the loss of hope. But giving someone hope is just as important as giving them the material needs that they have. So in addition to God commanding us in the right actions when someone before us is in need, God is also commanding us in the right words to say to alleviate the distress, to return the self-esteem, and to introduce a level of hope that they in the future will be able to help someone else. That also is part of the mitzvah of tzedakah. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.